sea level rising, that is true. But there is something that we can do. Protect the mangrove, the red and black mangrove, the mangrove that you see. On Just one more shot. Hi, hi. Just make sure you don't fall on it. Your mother would freak out on me. The water comes in too sudden. Yeah, and it's rising every day. When I was your age, that coastline used to be way out there. Sea level rising, that is true. It's rising everywhere? Yes, everywhere. But you know, Guyana coast is below sea level. So it is a big problem for us. Most Guyanese live along the coast. So we have to do something to hold back the sea. Either that or we go live in Mabro. Where there's no seawall line and no camp. And the coast has the best land for agriculture. The seawater is plenty worries. So you build a seawall. Either that or you put in some serious pumps. Yes, and serious pump is serious money. Long ago, we had mangroves that kept out the sea. You know, I got a mangrove video. When we get home, I can put it on for you. Okay, you organize. I want to be stopping and starting this, you know. Yeah, I got a Solara and Juice. We're all good to go. All right. Historically, when the Dutch built our concrete sea defenses to keep out the sea, our entire coastline was covered with mangroves for hundreds of kilometers between the Waini and the Quarantine rivers. Unfortunately, over the years, that natural protection has been weakened because the mangrove forests have been dramatically depleted and in some instances lost altogether. The majority of this destruction occurred in the difficult economic times of the 1970s when the mangrove trees were cut for firewood and other uses. There were no programs to restore what was destroyed, so today we're only left with 24,000 hectares of mangrove forests. Erosion by the sea has also removed mangroves and caused changes to our coastline. For example, these cokers at Mount Report today, a quarter mile from shore, show where the coastline was over 100 years ago. Mangroves benefit us in many ways. They break up the energy of the incoming waves and help to prevent coastline erosion. And then, solids in the seawater are trapped in the mangrove roots, eventually creating land. To go inside the mangrove forest is to see that mangroves are also fish nurseries in that they provide a safe haven for the marine life breeding along Guyana's coastline. Many species of birds find refuge and sustenance in the mangrove forests and it is also home to monkeys and other animals. Mangroves also play a very important role in combating climate change because they store 10 times more carbon than any other tree in Guyana's forest. The branches of the black mangrove tree is also used by fishermen as fishing poles to tie their nets. So you see, while mangroves are largely sea defense, they also have other values for us. This red thing on my slipper is mangrove bark. Exactly. If you go to Arawak Lady in Linden, all the leather work there is mangrove dye. I see what you mean. Mangroves are useful in all kinds of ways, but we're losing them big time, right? Yeah, but at least we're doing something about it now. The government put up some money to start a mangrove restoration project. The European Union contributed funding. And now we have some serious mangrove replanting going on, with community groups involved with it. I think we passed one in Coven, John. There are about 10 of them. And by the way, here's another point the video didn't mention. We have a set of people of the East Coast producing honey in the middle of the mangrove forest. Mangrove honey? I'm telling you, it's the black mangrove. 
The blossoms make the best honey, a lovely golden kind of color, sweet for days and no chemicals. So we can relax. We have restoring the mangoes to keep out the sea. We know about all these other uses and we got the community groups going. You young people, always seeing things cut and dry. How you mean? I can't explain it so good. Listen to the program. Mangroves not only protect us from the sea, they also give us some of the best honey. The story of mangrove honey takes us up the Burbis River and deep into the black mangrove forests, where a few beekeepers are producing mangrove honey. Uh, this, is a, this is a mangrove um, flower, the black mangrove. So take a look at the flowers, how the bees are in it. Bees have to visit 75,000 of this mangrove, black mangrove flower to make one palm of honey. Yeah, the benefit of the mangrove honey, right, is to help, especially as attack again the diabetic, even the asthma case, even, even when you get cut, the honey even heal the cut. So you know, even good for um, like we get acne, the honey will treat acne. Even with red eye, the honey treat the red eye. And even if you get any sickness or not, the honey will help it. Even um, in World War I, the surgeon used to take honey on the battlefield to heal wounds. And if people today should come back to honey, bring all the sickness in this world today. That's why people should protect the mangrove and, and decide to raise more bees so that we can get bountiful honey. The good news is that a vigorous mangrove restoration project is underway. But the bad news is that significant threats remain. And almost all of them are man-made. Precisely where the mangroves grow, along the rivers and along the coastline, are also some of the same places people turn to for farming or for housing developments. And that means mangroves get cut down. Another problem is the widespread practice of grazing animals near the mangroves. Goats and cows feed on the young mangrove seeds, preventing them from germinating into plants. These grazing animals also feed on the young seedlings that may spring up along the shore. They become food for goats and never become mature plants. Well, the problem what we get uh, with the cows them is that when they graze the mango, it's not alone. They graze it and they eat the seeds also. And we know as, as a ranger, we got to protect the, uh, the beach because these mangroves pro protect us a lot from the um, tidal wave and erosion. There's a lot of aspects they're wrong, and you see a lot of uh, these um, cattle farmers don't know the uses of these mangroves at the water side. So you know, they are, some of them are ignorant over the fact. So when you tell them about mangroves, they, they, um, they say, hey man, you're just wasting the time. Yes, but you know, as we're going to educate them and tell them about the mangroves, they will know more about it, and they will try to keep out the animal from, from the mangrove. Mangrove forests are also endangered by the thoughtless disposal of garbage. The burning of this material results in fires getting out of hand and sections of mangrove forests that took decades to develop are destroyed in a matter of hours. Mangrove destruction is also caused by fishermen pulling their boats through the mangrove forests and over the young seedlings. The result is a trail of damaged or destroyed plants. Instead of a future mangrove forest, we have a bare, open mud flat. In my days when I was a little boy, we used to go out the back there and play cricket and catch crab and such like parkour and them things. You know, and we used to set sail, my father and myself, we had boat here. We used to set till, we had to walk, we used to walk and go till out about 200, 300 feet from the sea wall. From the wall, the, the coca that you stand, see standing there now, we used to 200, 300 feet away from there. You used to walk and go out. Now the water take up everything. So if we protect the mangrove, right, it would be very important to us, not for us alone, for society in the whole. You know what I can't stop thinking about? I bet you just have to do something with your belly. Right. That mango honey, I'm dying to taste some of that stuff. Well, you're in luck. Actually, I'm going up to Victoria. 
take off your slipper, put on your sneakers and let me go. You got that honey for me? All right, my crumb by my crumb. Right there, boy. Liquid gold, liquid gold, honey. Joe, this is my daughter, Becky. Hello, Becky. She resemble you, boy. <laughs> Some seawater catch her yesterday afternoon, and now she's curious about mangroves. Well, Becky girl, you come to the right place. Let us take a walk. We are in the Golden Grove Victoria Reserve area. And in this area, we have all three species of mangrove. We have the red deer, which we call the monkey whistle. Then you have the black, and then you have the white mangrove in this area. You understand? Yes. Yeah. Um, one question. Oh, of course. Listen, salt water kills all plants, even grass. How can mangroves survive? Good question, my girl, good question. Well, I'm going to tell you, after me tell you about all three species we have in this area, we're going to tell you about the black mangrove. The black mangrove, it goes down into the soil and come on back. If you look, you see some pop root, it come up for breeding purpose. Okay? Good. That's why they survive. That's one of the reasons they survive. And if you check on the leaf also, the black mangrove, you taste it, it's salty, very salty. You know why it's salty? It absorbs the brackish water and then it gives off the salt water. That's why it is so salty. You know, Joe? Tell me. You should explain to her about the replanting of the mangroves in that sticky mud. Well, for that, you need to go to the Mangrove Visitor Center for that. All right. One of the most important part of the mangrove planting process is to ensure that we get nothing but healthy mangrove seedlings. Alicia collects the mangrove seeds from the beach, puts them in a plastic bag with mud, and nurture them until they are 14 inches high. Once attaining the height of 14 inches, they are strong enough to withstand the energy of the waves, and they are taken out to the seashore, where they are planted by the workers of the National Drainage and Irrigation Authority. We are at the visitor center between the Belfield the Golden Grove Mangrove Reserve, the first in Guyana, and we are very proud of it. It, is, it has shown us some success stories in community involvement. Um, it has been maybe one year, but we already see the outputs and the positive returns of this project. We are beginning to turn the tide, and we do welcome you to come down one day and visit us here. We have a mangrove action committee which includes representatives from the Sea Defences, Guyana Forestry Commission and the Ministry of Agriculture. We've also developed a mangrove management plan and we have produced an inventory of our coastal mangroves. Also, we have created a mangrove planting manual. Uh, the public awareness program that you see going on has been helped by Protect the Mangroves billboards that you see all around our country um, with, with assistance from the private sector and also involvement with our own pro project. Um, and the displays you see here also in the Mangrove Center, uh, we, we, have, we have been getting a lot of public awareness from this. The spin-off effects of the Mangrove Restoration Project are many and today in the Victoria Golden Grove Mangrove Reserve Forest, women from these communities have joined together. They are now producing a wide range of agro products under the Mangrove Reserve Products brand. And even along the coastline, more and more communities are learning to produce mangrove honey. Today, these income generating projects are supporting over two dozen families who are reaping the sweet success of golden mangrove honey production. And the, the mangrove tree, especially what we consider the corda, local name, is a very good honey producing plant. And once bee is managed good and, and in a sustainable way, 
you could you could make a pump that living out of it without even destroying the forest. I am a fisherman. The fish need mangoes to go big like this. Um, I've been out to the mangrove restoration site twice, I should say that. And both times I went there I was able to get this honey. Yeah, planting back the mango panel and game back the land. Protect so when the water will come big now it can't come and get with flood and them thing flash over the sea while it's a flood with. So the mangrove good for protect we. Yeah, without the mangoes, we can't have crabs because the crab will find no, new grounds, new home to live, and they will move out. They will go out on the sea, and the water will move them, and they will move and go and find other places. So without the mangoes, the crab can't live. The mangoes is very important. Today, living along the low coastline, we have to appreciate mangrove forests as a natural barrier against the ever-threatening sea. This forest, largely grown in its own, is sometimes damaged by people trying to make a living. But we must find ways of dealing with these issues. In the end, our coastline will always be vulnerable. But nature has given us mangrove forests to keep out the sea. It is a natural barrier we must maintain and protect.